Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I thought I would do a full face of makeup products I regret. I got this idea because I have the Surratt foundation sitting out here. All my other foundations I put away so I can really think what I'm putting on foundation in the morning. I'm not just putting on whatever's on my table, but I think, what do I want? This I keep out because I've spent $75 on it and I really don't like it. And I was thinking, I, I have to use this. This is so much money. It's just throwing money away. So I thought, you know, I have some blushes I don't like. I have some lips I don't like. I have things that I regret buying and I want to look good. So the goal isn't to show you how bad these are. These may work for you. They may be your favorites. But for me, I don't love them. And maybe looking at them again will make me think, okay, I'm gonna bring them back to play. So let's start with foundation. We're going to start with the Surratt. This is something that is just, the applicator is fussy unnecessarily so, and I find if you shake it, you don't have a problem with this little thumb thing. And sure enough, it just fell out. I think the reason I don't like this is they have really bad color range. It's just not much. This is the best color for me. But as you can see, it is too light and it's really yellow. And I just don't feel it does anything for me. I have no idea how many drops I got because it all kind of just came out. And I did my sunscreen and my skincare a solid hour ago. I've been in the living room just trying to cool down. And I'm just not sure how I can do this for another year. But every year, I find a way. It's like your body kind of gets used to the heat and you're not quite as miserable. Except for those days that are over 100. Those are pretty miserable no matter what. And I, you know, we don't, I don't have HC. So, not a lot of coverage. And yet, you can see it on the face. So I'm just going to blend in where the yellow is really prominent because that's probably why you can see it on the face. Half the game, I think, to getting a really natural look with your foundation is getting the right color. So yeah, <laughs> I just don't think it does anything for me and I have so much redness that it has done zero to take care of. and. That's the story with that one. I still don't like it. I do have to use this, so I don't know what I could use it with. I could blend it with something that also is problematic, but I'm not sure what. But uh, yeah, that is the Surratt Beauty Dewdrops Foundation. Just, just a no. Now for concealer, this I regret, this is from Chantecaille, but I can't say I use it all that much. And I remember the last time I used it, I thought, this isn't bad. I should use this again. It's it's expensive. And I think I got some there. Whoops, I got way too much. It's pretty creamy, which I think when you're older, things that are really creamy are problematic because they're almost tacky. And getting them to blend can be tricky. I mean, since I got so much, I'm just going to put, put them around my eyes as well. <laughs> Way too much. So I'm going to go in with this, at least around the eyes. I usually like to blend with my fingers, but I just don't find that formulas like this are ideal for fingers. I'll finish with fingers. But I'm doing the same thing I do with the finger, just pat. And now I'm just going to let this dry for a minute before I finish with my finger. I mean, this has more coverage than the foundation, so that's good. And now I'm just going to just pat. But it's dry, so that's good. My hands are quite warm, of course, so it's just kind of melting everything in for a finishing touch. And you know what? It's pretty solid, actually. <laughs> we'll see what it looks like in 10 minutes. I always think it's weird when you have more coverage with your concealer than you do with your foundation. Um, but yeah, in fact, I mean, I feel like taking some of that and just 
putting it where I have redness on my face. I think we're going to. Because like I said, the goal is not to look bad. And I did pull, a, I got a lot out. So there's redness right here because I had one of those adhesive things on my nose last night. And yeah. <laughs> and right here where I have redness. And just blend this in. It blends in beautifully. It really does. No effort. Just kind of touch it and it blends. Many people don't have as much redness as I do, and they can put on something that is light, like the Surat, and just do some concealer in a couple of places. But for me, I feel like I'd need to do it everywhere. Like my forehead. Okay, I think that's about all the concealer. Okay, I do have a powder I want to put on, and I did my skincare hours ago, so I could powder right now because I'm not waiting for everything to really dry. But I want to give this a little bit more time and see if it just kind of starts to meld together and meld with my skin and ends up being a little bit more agreeable. So we're going to go in with eyes. This is probably my first Natasha Denona palette. This is the Lila palette. And what brought me in with these mattes are so beautiful. They're just these two, these two, and this one. There's something about these mattes. They have a lot of depth to them, meaning it's not like let's just do, we'll put a brown in there and then we'll put a gray in there and call it a day. I feel like her mattes, this palette especially, just have so much going on. I'm just going to do a swatch. I have no idea if she's still doing this formula, but this is the color, and I thought so neutral, so lovely, but the truth is, and they still swatch beautifully. Oh my god, such an easy swatch. Bam. Bam. It's the purples that I regret, and I just don't pick this up thinking, okay, I'm going to go for those mattes, and I don't know why, and obviously it's my problem, but it's so hard for me to figure out how to put together looks with this color story that aren't outrageous looks, that are daily looks. So I kind of regret it, just because I never, ever turn to it. Now I do have my fan on, you guys, um, and I'm beginning to sweat, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. I apologize in advance. And Maybe we'll go MOS and I'll just point to what I'm doing and put on some music. my brows and mascara 
then I will turn down the fan and we'll do the rest of the face. I feel like there's a piece of fuzz in my eye, but I can't see it. I can only feel it. So if there's redness, weirdness going on, it's not the Natasha Denona palette. It's literally like fuzz. Let's go in with powder. First of all, I love this packaging. This is Givenchy, and this was a limited edition, I think. This is the Prism Libre powder, and I'll write down the color below. Now, they have blushes in Europe that are the same kind of thing right now, and the idea is, I don't know if you can see on the puff, there's a little bit of each color on there, and this is something that probably would work better with a puff, I don't know. As you can see, there is green, blue, lavender, and this looks like white or very pale lavender. And I thought it would be good powder to have for all the egregiously yellow foundations that I own. And this one kind of falls in that category. You can use that puff or you can kind of dump it in. Now I have a fan going, but hopefully you can see a little bit of what's going on there. And I'm going to take my large Surat brush and I want to do some here because I am going to use a powder blush. I don't know. It's slightly scented. I don't know if this is actually taking down the yellow orangey thing I got going on here. But I am going to powder my entire face, which is not something I usually do. And I find that I just never really use it. Let's go into blush. Charlotte Tilbury blushes. I have two that I have had in my life, four or maybe even five, and returned them. There are many things to like about Charlotte Tilbury's line, but there's many things not to like. It's an uneven line to me. I don't like her foundation colors, um, but I do love her highlighter. Her blushes, I find, read orange on me, and it doesn't matter what color they are. They read orange on me, and she also has shimmers. She doesn't have mattes, and I just don't like the way it looks. I don't mind a sheeny blush, but I, you go outside and you see these shimmers, and this is not my thing. So I have two things I have Walk of No Shame and Sex on Fire. The Walk of No Shame is the one I regret the most, but I felt bad about returning it because I returned the other things that I bought. So this is how Charlotte has designed her blushes. You go around the sides and you pick up this color, knock off, and this goes on most of the cheek. I am definitely seeing a glow, first of all. And then you take the center for a pop. Pop. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like this pulls kind of orange on me and I don't even understand what this pop is about. It looks like it might be a highlighter. I mean, why would you want to put a highlight on your cheek right there? Especially people who have textured skin. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I mean, I, I get it, and yet I just don't love it on me. Bronzer, Dior Mineral Nude Summer Games, I think it is called. And this is what it looks like. This was a limited edition, but they still make this. It just doesn't look like this. And I thought, the pinkness inside it that will be really good for me. But the truth is, you guys, I bought this when I bought like three other bronzers that I kind of like better. And I'm not a huge bronzer person and I never went into this. So this is more like, do I need to pull this out and start using it? Maybe I do. Or maybe it's not a great color for me. I usually don't put on this much bronzer. I'm not sure. I do feel now that I have things all over my face. <laughs> um, and it's later than I usually shoot, so the light is very different right now. It, it doesn't seem like it's a bad color. All right, lips. When Bureno came out with their makeup line, for you know my own personal interest to a certain extent, and for the channel, I bought several things. The lips 
I never wear, I never ever, and they're not going to go with what I'm wearing today, you guys. I never turn to these. They're really pretty colors. They're not incredibly comfortable. So here are the two colors. I'm going to do the pink one just for gigs. They're very opaque, and yet I never turn to them. It's not terribly uncomfortable. So there is a slight vanilla taste to this, which I don't mind. A slight scent to it, which I don't mind. It's just a little bit. I do think the bullet could be more precise, especially because I, it feels a little bit like a bomb, but it's very opaque. But it's not so opaque that I don't see my lip color underneath it. I'm going to pull in right now. And you can get an idea, maybe, of what I'm talking about. The packaging is really beautiful. The colors are fabulous. I love this color too. I love both these colors, but I just never turn to it. I never turn to it. And and I'm really not sure why. And I kind of regret it. I kind of regret it. But it's not because it's a bad product. It's just it could be better. That's what it is, especially for the price. So I guess that's going to be it. I don't have a highlighter to add in. And uh, yeah, it's a full face of makeup I regret. So let's start with the Surat. How does my skin look now? The skin looks good, but I have powdered it. I also think that their line of colors is not very good. So this is the best for me, but it's really, really yellow. And I just, I still don't like it. I don't like working with it. I don't like what it does for me. I've tried things that don't have a lot of coverage and yet it does a little something je ne sais quoi from my skin that I can't put my finger on. This does not. It just doesn't work for me. Not saying it won't work for you. Not saying you won't love it. I'm just saying for me, oh no. Blushes. I don't like her blushes. I don't like little sparkles in my cheeks because I want to go outside and have it, it's just too much, you know what I mean? I swear this is pulling orange on me. So I just don't like her blush formula. They absolutely do not work for me and the color always pulls orange. So I regret and I still do regret. This bronzer, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it in another room, but I feel like it's not like a deep, horrible regret. It's expensive, so I regret it for that. But it's not a bad product. I just, I had others at the same time that I thought were better for me. This is warmer. So it's not deeper in tone, but it's warmer than I think what works well on me. So I regret it. The Givenchy Prism Libre Powder and Mousseline Pastel. I don't know. I feel like it probably gives the same effect as the balls do, the pearl balls, but it's just ground up. And I actually have one of those too, which I also regret because I never use it. Does it help? Does it do what I wanted it to do, I guess is the question, which would not be a mistake of Givenchy, it would be a mistake of me where I was thinking it could help with things that are just too orangey or yellow on me. I'm not sure. Let me know below if you think it was effective at all. But I never turned to it. And Natasha Denona Lila palette. The look I got I think is really, really, really pretty. Unfortunately, because I'm hooded, you can't really, really see it unless I do this so pretty. This formula of mattes is so great. I know that Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath like the big bling looks. I get it. But I would, I just, I appeal to them, please, it would be so lovely if you did palettes, a couple of palettes, a couple different colorways, um, of mattes because this formula is so good and again I don't know if she's still doing this formula because she changes things so often but she has something a little warmer and a little cooler the cool was pretty cool so I mixed these two I went this and this and this and this one and this one just to kind of take the edge off of the coolness I think the mattes are so beautiful and so helpful to people like me who the bling bling look is good for fun, but I, I really, I'm not really going to leave the house looking like that. Instagram is all good fun, but it, it's not reality. And 
the formulations that both of them do are so good, I think they deserve to leave the house. You know what I mean? The look is very, very pretty. And I think the reason that I just, I don't turn to it is I can't really figure out how to employ some of these brighter colors. I mean, these are such beautiful colors, it's crazy. Look at that. Check out the thumb color. They are beautiful. And maybe if you don't have hooded lids, you could do more with these and just kind of put them here, for instance, to get a pop of shiny color. But for me, you're never going to see this. I'm just going to take my braid out while we finish up. I think what we have with the Lila palette is beautiful matte colors that have depth and richness to them, and beautiful matte formulas that work well with crepies, combined with some vibrant, beautiful, you cannot deny it, brighter colors. And I just can't find a way to make it work for me on an everyday kind of basis. And the lips, I already got my thoughts across on the lips. I, I stand by what I said. Oh, and the concealer. Yeah, I think it's too expensive for what it does. I think when a concealer is that expensive, it really needs to do something pow. And this is perfectly fine, but it's not, it doesn't um, warrant the price tag, I don't think. And I didn't use it for a reason. I didn't use it because I felt like the texture wasn't quite right for me and it didn't do enough for me. And you guys, that is it. These are some high-end purchases that I regret and why. I'm not saying I look bad. It doesn't look bad. Well, I mean, the look color is totally not working with the eye color, but you get, you get my drift. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. And I'm linking everything below because just because they're not working for me doesn't mean they won't work for you. So check below for that. And uh, until we meet again, be smart, be safe, and I'm wishing you good health.